Hi there, welcome to Mr. Morgan's Math Help for Algebra 1, Unit 1 on Sequences. Our final lesson in this unit, Lesson 10, called I Know, What Do You Know? All right, as always, hopefully you've done the homework ahead of time and you're back here to check your answers to see if you're getting it or maybe you got stuck on something and you want a little bit of help here and there. And that's why we're here for you, to help you out so it all makes sense so you can ask some good questions in class and make sure you're ready to go for the next lesson and activity. All right, so for the first one, we're going to be looking at all this mess here. It says using the recursive rule f of n equals f times n minus 1 plus 8, and a starting point of f of 1 equals negative 10, select all the statements below that represent the sequence. All right, so we have a couple things here. First, we have this rule here, our recursive rule. So f of 1 equals f of n minus 1 plus 8. All right. We could write that also as a explicit, um, yeah, explicit rule. And so an explicit equation where we'd say it's going to become, in this case here, we see we're adding 8, so we know that it's arithmetic, okay? So because it's arithmetic, we would say that our explicit rule would be f of n equals, in this case here, we will take our starting value, minus 10, minus 10, plus, in this case here, 8, oh, where's it going? There it goes, 8 uh, times n minus 1, okay? So, we now have a recursive and an explicit uh, equation for what they provided us with. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. A says f of n equals 8n minus 2. So the question for A is, well, if I rewrite, for example, this one right here, if I was to factor this out, what would I come up with? I'd have negative 10 plus 8n minus 8, which would be rewritten as 8n, and we have minus 10 and minus 8 minus 18. So another way of rewriting the explicit here is that f of n equals 8n minus 18 by using the distributive property and seeing what else I have. So having 8n minus 2 doesn't work, so that's going to be a no for that one. How about when f of 2? What is f of 2? Does it equal negative 2? Well, let's plug it in and see. f of 2. So for f of 2, we can stick it in the equation right here. And we can say 2 minus 1 is 2. Well, um, yeah, let's do it like this. Um, Sorry, I get ahead of myself a little bit there. Let's go like this, and let's go with a n and an f of n. Okay, so what do we know? We know that at 1, the first value is negative 10. We also know that we're growing by 8, so we're going to be adding 8 each time. So at 2, we're going to do negative, eight plus, negative 10 plus 8, so we're going to be at negative 2. So I can see that this is actually a true statement right there. It does work, it's the next term, and I can plug that in and take a look and see, yes indeed, that does work, okay? So we're good there, all right. And again, if we look back over here, and use the formula, our previous term was 10, or sorry, it was negative 10, and if we add eight to negative 10, we're at negative two, that one works. Next, I have a point, two comma four. Well, these are like points, right? And I have 2, negative 2. So that's not going to work for that one there. f of 7. Well, a couple options. I can continue to do this and go down, right, and keep going on down until I get to 7. Or I could use the explicit formula to see what happens. Well, with explicit, and I can use either one, um, let's use this one right here. We could say negative 8 times 7 minus 18. So I end up with negative 56, this right here, negative 56, uh, something's a little off in my head here, uh, minus 18, which is going to be a big number. It's not going to be equal to that one right there. Hmm, something's not quite working. So let's erase that real quick. It's okay. All right, let's take a look here. Let's just do this real quick. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see what happens if we drop by 8. So negative 2 plus 8 becomes 6. 6 plus 8 becomes 14. 14 plus 8 becomes 22. 22 plus 8 becomes 30. 
and 30 plus 8 becomes 38. So this actually does work just fine for that one right there. And yeah, it does work. Um, yeah, that's going to be okay. All righty. So let's look back at the next one here, number E, letter E, f of n, 8 times n minus 2 minus 2. Well, this is an interesting one. If we distribute it out, we'd have 8n minus 16 minus 2, which becomes 8n minus 18, which matches what we already did over there. So that's okay. For f, we have 1 is 8, which we already know that's not correct. So 1 should be at negative 10. So that's not going to be okay. G, we have f of n equals 8n minus 18, which we already said was true over here. We have a point 414, which we can see right there. So that's going to be true. Then we have one at 10. Let's try this again for 10. We would say um, that our starting point is negative 10 plus... 8 times um, n minus 1. So that's going to be n minus 1 is actually 9, right? Because if n is 10, a number 10 to 4 is 9. So negative 10 plus 72 is 62. And so that does match right there. So we're going to say that's okay. I'm going to come back to this one real quick. So let's look again at this one. This will be negative 10 plus 8 times 1 less than 7 is 6. There we go. That's what I'm doing wrong. So negative 10 plus 48 is 38. That's how we got there. So it's always good to do your work. Check it out. I and mean, again, make a mistake, then come back and take a look at it. How'd you do it wrong or right? That's how it is. So we're going to go B, D, E, G, H, and I. Lots of stuff. Whew. Okay. Use each table to write the explicit equation that represents the process used to create the input-output. So we're trying to write an explicit equation here. So for explicit equation, we would say that f of n is going to be equal to, we want to be equal to, because we're adding, right? We know that this one here is um, an arithmetic equation. Because I'm adding, I'm going to look at that rate of change, which is 3 times n. And I say what I start with again and again, I'm starting with everybody gets a 10. So 3 times n plus 10. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. For the next one, same idea. Okay. F of n is going to be equal to my rate of change, negative 5 times n, because we're all getting a minus 5 each time, over and over and over again. And depending on how many there are, right, 1, 2, that's 2, we just call it in. Now I look at my starting point here, or starting point, or my, where everyone has, everyone has a 23, so everybody gets 23. And that's it for that one. Okay. Number 4, it says determine which of the explicit rules represents a table of values here? So we can see we're going from 4 to 20, which is times 5. 20 to 100 is times 5. So we know we're multiplying by 5. So overall, I know that in terms of my initial rule, f of n, or f of x, I can call it f of x since it says x right there. f of x is going to be equal to... In this case here, we're going to say our starting value times what's happening, 5 to the n minus 1 power. Okay, and that's it for that one. So, oh, not it. So now let's take a look at what we have over here. Which ones match? Well, 4 times 5 to the n minus 1 power, or x power, sorry, x. That one for sure. That's a straight across match, no problem at all. All right, looking at this one, we have 0.8 times 5 to the x. Well, let's plug a value in and see what happens. That's an easy way to do it. Let's just check it out here. Let's put a 1 in there. Do I get 4? The question is, if I put 1 into it, can I get a 4? So 0.8, 5 times 5 to the first, which is 5. 0.8 times 5 is actually equal to 4. So that's okay. How about this one? We'd say 20 to the 1 minus 2 power times 5. 
1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So that becomes 20 to the negative first power times 5, which is basically 5 over 20, or 1 fourth. Nope, not going to work. Next one, I have 5 times 4 to the first power, which is equal to 20. Not going to work. Down here, we have 4 to the 1 minus 3 power times 100. This becomes 4 minus uh, to the negative 2 power times 100. So that's like saying 100 over 4 squared is 16, definitely not equal to 4. And our last one right here, our last one, um, we're going to go ahead and say we have 500 times 5 to the 1 minus 4 power, which is 3, negative 3. So 500 times 5 to the negative 3 power is the same as writing it as 500 over, let's put this down at the bottom, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, and 500 divided by 125 is 4. So that's going to work as well. Okay, doing great. Use the given information to create the other representations for each arithmetic sequence. Alrighty, so let's make this. It's arithmetic, so we're adding or subtracting. We can see we are adding 3, adding 3. So let's do this here. For our recursive, we can say that f of n is equal to f of the previous term plus 3. As an explicit equation, we could say that f of n is going to be equal to, okay, and this is where we just have to, you know, be careful or decide which way we want to do it. Remember, there's a couple ways of doing this here, so think through which way makes the most sense for you, okay? We can say that uh, there's two ways. We can say we can do the rate of change, 3n plus something, and we have to figure out what that value is going to be which we don't know without going backwards and doing kind of our, our shortcut method. Or we could say f of n is equal to the starting value, 8 plus 3 times n minus 1. So you see with the second one, we're already done. We're good to go. <laughs> if not, then I have to kind of figure out, well, what would a 0 value be? And again, it's not part of our formula but I would subtract 8 minus 3 and come up with 5. So I could say that's the solution there. Most likely at this point, what they're looking for, what teacher wants you to do, is to be able to do it like this. And they, what we're trying to do is help you see that where these values come from. That this 8 comes from the starting value, right? And then the 3 comes from the rate of change there. And then this just becomes part of our formula in minus 1. Okay? So that's the idea with that one right there. And then you can graph it over here. I'm going to let you graph it. Again, you're going to draw your graph, make it nice. And you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. And then make your values go up there. And you show some kind of graph that's going up. Okay? Again, this is just me making a mess. I'll let you do that on your own. You should be able to graph it by now. Next one. Recursive, they give us recursive, f of 1 is equal to 3, and they give us this recursive formula, so we can see that's our first value there and our rate of change there. So if we make a table, we can have n and f of n. We have 1, 2, 3, I don't know how far you want to go, but our first value is 3. We know we're adding by 4, so we're going to say 7 and 11, and we can continue there if we wanted to. And in terms of the explicit equation, we would say f of n. Let's do this like we did last, our last one. Let's make this our starting value equals 3, right? And then what are we going to do? We're going to do 3, and we're going to add to it, because it's arithmetic, um, the rate of change, which is plus 4. So 4 to the n minus 1 power, or n minus 1. 3 plus 4, n minus 1. Okay? Now, in terms of the context for this, I don't, did I do a context last time? I missed the context, so sorry. For create a context back on number five, we can see that every day the cost goes up. We can say, every day I buy ice cream, the cost of an ice cream cone increases by $3, okay? The cost of an ice cream cone increases by $3 each day. So maybe write something like that. Over here, 
we have this, we don't know what's going on maybe. Um, every day I pick up uh, four more pieces of trash than the day before, <laughs> whatever it might be. All right, so then you're gonna do your graphing. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And again, you're gonna plot that out there, something along these lines. This is nowhere even close to make a nice little graph. Seven. All right, two to nine is plus seven, and nine to sixteen plus seven, plus seven. In terms of a context, we could say I smile at seven more people each day. Right, and that's how I'm keeping track of it. On day one, I smiled at two people, and the next day I smiled at seven more, the next day seven more. And you can say how many people I smile at in a month, and those kind of things. Recursive, f of n is equal to the previous term plus our rate of change. Explicit, it's gonna be what? Our first term plus our rate of change times n minus 1. Okay? And again, of course, graph that out and label it as best as you can. Okay. I should real quickly, let's just make sure. You could do it the other way, don't forget. You could say f of n <laughs> equals, and then what would we do? We would do our rate of change, 7n. But then you have to find out that value, and you have to go backwards, minus 7. Minus 7 and 2 become a minus 4. Five. So at zero, it's minus five. But there wasn't, a, there's not a way to start smiling on day zero, negative five smiles. That's why it doesn't make sense to do a table like this. It's just kind of a little eh, sneaky way of figuring that out. But I think we're looking for this at this point, for the explicit. And our last one, create a context. Janet wants to know how many seats there are in each row of the theater. Jamal lets her know that each row has two seats more than the row in front of it. The first one has 16. So row number one has, well, let's not do that. We could go f of n, or sorry, f of one equals 16. And we also know that what's happening is we're doing two more each time. So for our recursive, f of n is gonna be equal to f of the previous term, previous term plus two. For our explicit equation, Okay, for the explicit one here, a little different. Um, we'd have to know kind of what our starting point's going to be. Our starting point is 16. So we would say f of n is equal to our starting point plus our rate of change times n, oops, not plus 1, sorry, times n minus 1. As a table, we know the first one is 16. The second one, we're adding two more, so we'd say 18 third one 20, fourth one 22, so on and so forth. Okay, and again, you'd graph that out there, and up we go. Okay, all right, next one, I'm getting to the end. Use the, use the given recursive equation to write the corresponding explicit equation. So we have recursive, and we're gonna write the explicit, okay. So here we go. This is gonna be nice and fun. F of n is equal to our starting point, which is eight, right? And we're gonna be, in this case here, subtracting. Why? Because that's a rate of change, minus two. Eight minus two times n minus one. Next one, F of n is gonna be equal to our starting point, which is zero. And then we're going to say, what's our rate of change? Plus 5 times n minus 1. So probably best just to write that as equals 5 times n minus 1. <laughs> our next one, f of n is equal to our starting point, which is 5 thirds, minus or plus our rate of change times n minus 1. And then finally, our last one f of n is equal to our starting point, 6. We see our rate of change is minus 2 fifths times n minus 1. All right, that is it for today. That's actually it for our entire unit. So our lessons 1 through 10 are now done. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys do a great job on your tests. Review those kind of uh, cool down exercises and things you did in class. And 
Hope it goes well. Have a great day. See you for the next unit.